If you're not too bored with haul videos yet, I have another one for you today. Last time I showed you some journal supplies I had bought online, and prior to that I shared some things I had found at thrift stores. Well, I wanted to look for journal supplies in some places that were a little bit more unique and not the usual places I go to. So today I'm going to share with you those discoveries. I had visited an estate sale and I went to an antique mall and then I also went to the Creative Reuse Market. I hadn't been to the Creative Reuse store for over two years because of COVID and because of their location and their limited hours. But I'm glad I went back because I found some things that I didn't even know I was looking for. I'd like to think I'm making better choices now and that I'm being more uh, picky in what I get. Well hi everyone, welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Marcy and I offer up videos that provide inspiration and encouragement for the junk journal community. I also offer tips, ideas, and some tricks for a variety of paper crafting projects. So why don't you guys get yourself settled and we'll dive into the video right after this. Before we get started here, let me just say real quick, I'm doing this while my husband is out of the house. So he may come home in the middle and if he does, I'll pause while the garage door is going and while wow, my dog is barking her head off, okay? <laughs> so we may have to stop in the middle. But let's start with the things that I found at the Creative Reuse store. I didn't bring home a lot, but what I did bring home, I think, is stuff that is extremely useful or stuff that I've actually been looking for. I just didn't expect to find it there. So the first thing, they had uh, scrapbook supplies I believe everything was 50% off and then they also had a sign up that said please nobody donate any more scrapbooking or rubber stamp supplies. <laughs> so I guess I've been inundated since um, everybody's been cleaning out. But what I did find, I found some really cute rubber stamps. I'm going to put these on a backing here. This is a set I don't have and I don't know if this is from close to my heart or stamping up. But it had some different uh, phrases on it, like have a wonderful day, and it's your day. And then it had this cute little ballerina here, which reminds me of my girls when they were taking dance class. And then I have a whole bunch of uh, teddy bear stamps, so I liked how that one looked. So I grabbed that, and then I got this one too. It's kind of got this harvest theme with the corn stalks. They were all just sitting in a bin. So these were the stamps that I liked the best. And then I grabbed a whole bunch of this um, handmade or mulberry type of paper. I like it because it adds extra texture and interest. I can make pockets or tear it up, add them to clusters and different things. But there was just a whole bunch of these little pieces. And since this stuff is expensive to buy, I went ahead and invested in it. So I got that stuff. And then I just got a few scraps and things. I always look for vellum. So I found a couple of pieces of vellum. I like adding it in my books a lot. I'll, you'll usually see me add a vellum page like right towards the beginning of a journal. So I got that. And then, I don't know, I don't remember about how they charged me exactly, but it was a really good price on all these papers. And so I just kind of went through and picked out the ones I like or that I think would go with journals I have planned. Look at this one. There's a cute little barn. I know I've been talking about making a little red hen journal for ages, and I, I swear to you it's on the schedule this year. But, and I also, I have a piece of this paper already, so I was happy to buy a third. And then, look what I found. I found some Mary Englebright uh, stickers. So, alphabet stickers. So, for you Mary Englebright fans. <laughs> That was fun, I thought of you. And I think these might be Mary Englebright as well, or at least they look very similar. So the alphabet stickers, oh, Kathy Davis by Colorbook, Bach, however you say that. But they look very much like a, like a Mary Englebright. So that was a nice find. And then these kind of have that same feeling as well, these papers here. Although I don't think she has a scrapbook line. Put that with that one there. Sorry, I sort as I go. I can't help it. It's just the way I am. 
That one's pretty, isn't it? I like that. And there's this pretty one, which I'm not sure if it's meant to be winter or just what, but there are two pieces of it and I like the shade of green. So yeah, I found myself some scrapbook papers. And then I found some punches. And this one I'm very excited about. These guys didn't know what they had, but I've been looking for this punch for a long time on eBay and stuff, and it's def definitely discontinued. It's a Martha Stewart. They charged me 50 cents. I'm not kidding, 50 cents. So I had already punched it on the paper so that I could tell and make sure that it actually worked. And then the same thing with this flower punch. So this is an EK success. And I actually have a tiny version of this flower, so I'm excited to see this bigger size because then I can layer them up. So this is about, I would guess, about a one inch across. But then I can layer and have layered flower embellishments. And then this one was a corner punch, which I didn't test, but let's do it. I don't know about you guys, but I always punch upside down so I can see where it's lined up. So look at that. Isn't that pretty? I just like to have a little detail on my corners once in a while, and that is the best way to do it. I also found these stickers, which have, oops, I down, have kind of a um, tractor, farmy vibe, and they're in strips. So, you know, as you lay them across the edge of your sheet, you're just gonna kind of get the, the hint of what the image is. But I like those for fall or farm. And then I found these vellum labels which are also very cool. So yeah, I'm adding to my punch supply. I think I've mentioned before that rubber stamps, I like to invest in rubber stamps because they're pretty timeless if you choose wisely and you can use them over and over for a lot of things. And I feel the same way about punches, that if you pick good designs, you're gonna always use them. And then the other things I found were these two stamp pads. So this is the Ranger. Um, Adirondack in raisin, which I I haven't tested them out, so maybe we could do that real quick. Let me find a piece of paper. And I just happen to have a rubber stamp right here. How handy is that? So let's see. I was willing to take a chance on them because, again, everything was 50% off. So that was all the stamps and the inks and the papers and stickers. And I thought, well, they're not charging me hardly anything, so if it doesn't work out... I haven't wasted a lot of money and I've helped support a good cause because their whole goal ooh, is to keep everything from going to the landfill as much as possible. Isn't that pretty? And it's a pretty color and a pretty stamp. Yay! Good investment. There's that one. And then let's try... Oh, this one almost looks like it's never been opened, but I'm sure it has. Let's try one of these... Okay, let's try this chrysanthemum. You know, until I started watching the ladies um, making their junk journals and stuff, I was still kind of an old school stamper and I didn't realize you could just press stamps on the pad and they would still work. And I see a lot of people do this, so now I'm not afraid to do that, but I'm gonna just flatten this with the lid so it gets an even, even texture. Okay, it's pretty pale, but it turned out really nice. Can you see that? Isn't that pretty? Yay! So I would say this is more of an um, accent color. I have a couple others from Hampton Art. They're just very pale. They're kind of like background stamps. And so this will be very nice because I also don't really have a nice turquoise anymore. So yay, I'm very happy that worked out. And then just some random little things I found. One was just... Um, this little photograph, I don't know who Gail and Tommy are, but I thought the photograph was cute. <laughs> Sometimes they have boxes with lots of old photographs in them. And this was the only one that I really found that was even black and white or that had an image that I liked. So this was the only one I grabbed this time, but I have in the past grabbed others. And then a couple things. One of the things I was looking for actually is a paintbrush for um, splattering with. And I don't know much about paint brushes, but this is a round one and it seems to me from watching other people that when they flick it, you know, like this to get paint splatters, the round ones work better. And I didn't want to spend a lot. So I think he was like 50 cents or something. Also, he wasn't very much. And then while I was looking at paint brushes, look what I found. This is only $4, which is amazing because there's half of it left. 
modeling paste. And I've been wanting to try the modeling paste because you can use it to add dimension to your tags and things. You spread it over the stencil and you lift the stencil and then let it dry. Now I see a lot of people using this and I had been looking for it online, but man, it is expensive. So to find this only half used for four bucks was a real bargain to me. It makes it worth it to see if I even like using it or if I would continue to use it and then I can pay more for the full brand new brand new bottles or whatever online and then I also found this little tin not because I want to alter Altoid tins but this guy well I don't think he comes out there it is I thought it'd be good for storage but I really like the picture of the little boy on the front he's so cute so he doesn't need altering he's gonna be great to store something small in so there's that stuff and then I also got laces I spent a considerable amount of time going through their bins with the laces so it was worth it and I also had kind of an idea of what colors I wanted to get so I I kind of devoted myself to only certain colors as well so I've got this really pretty wide yellow ribbon here and then I got I got this one so it's kind of a mesh but it has the sparkle in it and it feels kind of 70s to me but I thought it'd be really pretty Another yellow. It's a cotton, almost like a crochet, but very soft, very sweet. Got that one. I got this pretty green that had some gold braid in the middle. Thought that would be pretty for Christmas, maybe. This is kind of interesting. I don't know. It has like a wire wrapped around it. <laughs> I got this one that has a blue. I think that's, this looks like it's the right side. Here we go. It's got these blue crescents. It's very art deco. Isn't that pretty? Just different, you know? I was looking for things that were different than what I usually see. And the older ones, I feel like the older laces and things just have a little more style. Oh, here's my husband. Let me pause for a minute. There we go. We should be safe now. Okay, so I was showing you this cute little tiny doily. Make a nice focal point on a cover. And then black, I wanted some black lace. I think this is a nice delicate little trim. So it's, that'll be good for edging and putting on, on um, ephemera and things. Then I found this pretty one. It's kind of a turquoisey, almost green, seafoam green. It's very pretty and it's got that shimmer to it. So I like that trim. I found this pretty pink. I don't know what you call it exactly, but it's got the little tiny, little fuzzy like flowers on it interwoven with a vine or with leaves. And then it's just a nice little trim, also great for decorating tags and, and other ephemera and stuff. So that'll be nice. And then I liked this one because it's a fabric ribbon. It's a little bit thick, not super thick, but it has a nice, nice weight to it. So it should look really good on a page. And it should also ruffle up very easily when you're trying to sew it. You should be able to get a good ruffle. I should be able to get a good ruffle out of it. And then I got some Christmas ribbon because I don't really have a lot that I would use in journals anyway. I got this really pretty big gold. It's almost like a buttercup yellow. It's a, it's a dresser scarf. Oh no, it's not. It's two doilies. I'll check that out. I think I thought it was all one piece. Yeah, so there's a couple of those, which are pretty for either cutting up or wrapping around a journal cover. So I found some pretty embroidered pieces and I'm still wanting to scan. That reminds me, I'm missing one that was so interesting. Oh, it's not in this pile. Hold on, it'll come. It'll show up. I didn't buy it there. I have this one, isn't that pretty? It's got, again, kind of that Art Deco look to it, 1930s, kind of a 20s or 30s look. And then there's this one. Isn't that pretty? Yeah, so I think I did all right. I didn't spend a ton. My receipt says I spent $20.69 on all of that. Amazing, huh? Next up, I went to an estate sale 
it appeared to be an older gentleman who lived alone. He didn't, I don't think his wife was living anymore and he, they had a lot of his suits and things. And I think he was in some kind of like maybe engineering field or something because he had a lot of calculators and rulers and notepads and things. I was looking for field guides. You know, I thought an estate sale might give me a better shot at finding something because you just don't see them in thrift stores or anything here. So I didn't really find any field guides, but I did find a few books and some of them feel kind of like a field guide, but here you go. There's this one, this beautiful Muzzler Goose nursery rhyme illustrated by Kate Greenaway. So I'm gonna have to decide if this is going on my personal shelf or if this is going to be taken apart for journals. And I'm, I'm leaning towards keeping it because look at the cover. It's in mint condition. Really nice, really nice copy of that book. So here, there was this one on bees, and I do have in mind to do a honeybee journal, as I keep telling you. So the look of the artwork on the pages kind of feels like a field guide. Also, someday I'd like to be a beekeeper. I don't know if that will happen, but it's kind of my retirement dream to have bees. This one, uh, this is a children's book, but again, it has kind of that field guide look to it and it's it's getting a little ratty, so I won't mind cutting that one up. <laughs> so this one has bird images in it. Aren't those nice? It's got that nice um, pulpy paper, you know, that feels good on your hands and soft and tears nicely if you want to if you want to use these pieces in something. So that was a nice, nice find. And then there was this one on butterflies and moths. So even though I didn't actually find field guides, oh, look at this, this looks like, I'll have to read that. <laughs> looks, looks like a note from the teacher. I didn't see this when I bought it. Somebody's journal. Oh, cool. And this looks like little birdie feathers maybe. Do you think those are real bird feathers? I don't know. So these look like field guides, is what I was saying before I interrupted myself. Look at this, and they make a nice border on a page. All of this, all the way across this pretty image. So, didn't exactly find an actual field guide, but I found some things that will, that will suffice and have kind of the look and the artwork. Except for him, he's gotta go. <laughs> Butterflies and moths. And then, oh, I don't want to show you that quite yet. That was a fun surprise to find. Next, herbs and rare seeds. And I told you I love to grow herbs. So I may have to read this one before, before I do much with tearing it apart. But I liked the look of the, of the pages, how they look like an index you know, just something different for your for your journals. I like pages that look like that. And then there's all these little illustrations on the pages as well. So I think those add interest to journals. There's that. And then I found this really cool bird calendar, 1981. And um, I don't think I can get this in the frame all at once. So I'll just show you the pictures. Aren't those cool? Oh, they're pretty. That's the wood duck. Very pretty. Very pretty. Oh, <laughs> I'm looking at the calendar. Payday, payday. It's about paid a week apart. Time card's due for the 22nd. So this might have been a work calendar. Oh, I wonder if that was school. Isn't that pretty? Goldfinch. And this looks like a thistle. So yeah, lots of pretty images on this calendar. So that was a nice find. And then, um, like I said, he had all kinds of interesting like rulers and calculators. And then he had all these notepads, which I haven't taken apart yet. But I got them primarily because they had interesting paper. Okay, let's see what we got here. So we've got polar bears. I don't know if I'll use polar bears, but at least I can write on it at home. This one, doesn't this have like a nice masculine look to it? 
And then there's some elk and trees, so it's got that nature look. And there's puffins to go with the polar bear, I guess. And then this, see how these were just, it's like graph paper on a notepad. Aren't those cool? And it's a nice color too, I like that. This is just your basic lined paper. This one is your thought pad, which is perfect, right? For journals where we're recording our thoughts. I didn't take the pack apart, I just kind of grabbed it because it looked interesting. Anyway, that's kind of cool. Cowboy, cowboy rodeo theme. Here's some more graph paper. So maybe he worked for Boise Cascade. You can tell he definitely did something kind of science-y or engineering or something. There's handwriting in there. Just a blank Greg's notebook. I have lots of, I have had a few of these uh, steno notebooks from my, from my mother-in-law, but I think I've used them all up now. So that was fun. And then when I went inside, um, I was also looking for dishes and Pyrex and things like for my girls and stuff. And there just wasn't anything in the kitchen. And I actually hit it on the first day at, towards the beginning. So um, you could just tell it was a guy and he wasn't cooking. <laughs> but what I did find inside were these Ideals magazines. Um, this says 25 cents. That's not what they charged me. I think I bought I paid two dollars a piece for these But that must have been what it cost them originally So this particular Easter ideals uh, Publication I have one of my own that my mother-in-law had given me a number of years ago So it's nice to find the same one um, That I can use but this one looks older than the one I have But this is the Easter one does it have the year? I'll have to look later for the year. Here's a Thanksgiving. A little bit different than the one. I have a couple. One I've mostly used, and the other one is still waiting to be used. But these are a lot older than the ones that I have. Here's a different Easter Ideals. Not pretty. These have prettier pictures and prettier, brighter colors and just different different um, the fonts and stuff that they're using when they describe things. This looks more like the 60s, maybe late 50s, I don't know. There's that, and there's Mr. Easter Bunny. How cute. <laughs> so cute. There's that one, and then this one is just harvest, so it's all of fall. I was, I was very excited to get these so for $2 a piece, because I had been looking on eBay, and I think they're around four to five sometimes more especially ones this old they're a lot more so yeah so that was my happy discovery at the estate sale and then the last thing is from the antique mall so i went to the antique mall with my daughter uh, my younger daughter and it was a really yucky rainy cold day <laughs> as most of our spring has been, but that's okay. We're not complaining, it's just, it was really cold and I hadn't worn a coat that day, nor did I have anything for the rain, so that's why I remember it. But I just like to go there sometimes to look around, and the one shop usually has really interesting old postcards, so I picked through and just got the ones that I really liked. So there's this cute one. I was trying to get ones that I just really thought would go pretty much with anything. This one's a Christmas one. I can scan these as well and put them in my shop as digitals because they're all very old. Isn't that pretty? This cute little guy. I think he's stinking adorable. <laughs> I also like to find more things with little boys or that have a um, little boy or masculine theme because I think sometimes Everything is so girly that if you're looking for something that's a little more versatile, it's hard to find. You know, we like our frufery and our flowers and our vintage and our, you know, botanicals and all that. But that doesn't always lend itself to uh, making things for men or if you want to give a gift of a journal for a guy. They don't always want all that. This is a really pretty one for Easter with the forget-me-nots. And then I was looking for doilies. And I had to shush my daughter because I was looking for ones with pieces that I can cut apart and use, you know, individually. So I found this pansy one. 
But of course she's shouting out, you're not going to cut that apart. <laughs> like, no, no, I'm not. Very loudly. <laughs> I was like, stop. <laughs> you're right. I, it's kind of a shame, but I just want things that are a little bit different and a little more versatile than what you usually see. And also I'm just wanting some small doilies. So look at this one. So yes, it is a shame to cut them apart, but it's also a shame to just have people completely disregard them and they're getting tossed, you know? So unless somebody like me comes along and does something different with it, they they don't get appreciated by the general public, I don't think. And then I found this really pretty one in green and I picked it up because it's green and it's really cool. So who knows what we'll do with that, but I liked it. And these were, let's see, I don't see a price tag on them, but I'm thinking they were around $4 each maybe. Let me show you. Two of them were $3.99 and one of them was $4.99. So yeah, not super cheap, but not terrible. And then I found in a different section of the antique mall, different, different vendor, I found this pretty one. And then I found this cool thing. And this is um, leather, like, you know, tanned, tanned leather. So they've tatted around the edge and then it's got this beautiful leather look to it. Here's the back side. And I thought if I scanned it, it would be really pretty to use as a label, right? Because this is blank, so you could put anything in the middle and cut out around it and then yeah, so those are my finds from the antique mall and estate sale, fun things like that. It's always fun to just kind of change it up a little bit and just go somewhere different. I'm talking while I arrange. I know, I do that, don't I? <laughs> there you go. Give you something pretty to look at. So I had a couple things I wanted to mention and um, let's see. So the first thing is I had asked you guys to guess a couple weeks ago my favorite color and nobody has guessed it yet. <laughs> but then I realized that last week I didn't tell you what it was. So drum roll please. My favorite color is red. <laughs> it's almost always been red. Even when I was little, I wanted a pair of red shoes when I was five years old. I wanted to wear them with everything. So. I always like the color red, but not the bold, ugly, tomato-y red, but more like a darker, richer apple red or a barn red. So anyway, how many of you guys thought it might be red? <laughs> Were you expecting that? Yep, that's my favorite color. So the second thing is I'm taking a poll and my next journal is going to be a music theme journal, but emphasis on praise and worship music because it's inspired by my son-in-law's grandpa who is a worship minister. It's also going to be decorated with a more masculine style or aesthetic to it. And so in thinking over what I want to do with that, I decided I wanted to make it an altered book because I've not done that before. So my question is, what kind of book should I use? Should I use a Reader's Digest? Or, since it's a music theme, should I use a hymnal? Now my one thought about using a hymnal is that then there's music on every page and I wanted music to be an, um, a decorative element, but maybe not on every page. <laughs> I don't know. But a hymnal would be really cool, right? I have a poll up on my community tab. If you go to my channel, to the home for my channel and look along the top, it'll say like videos and playlist and community. And I have a poll there and you can go and vote on whether you think I should use the altered book or whether I should use a Reader's Digest. Or if you'd prefer to leave your comment below, that's fine too, but I'm wanting to test out this polling feature as well. So hopefully you guys can go and leave your vote. Finally, I want to congratulate again everyone that won in the giveaway last week. I mailed out four of the prizes this week, but I still have one person whose address I don't have yet, and that is Kim, Kim LaFontaine. So Kim, I still don't have your address, and could you please just send it to this email? I'm going to show it to you right now. Creatorscallshop at gmail.com. 
okay and just send me your address and then I will get your prize right out to you as soon as I get your address this week so I hope you're doing okay and that nothing has uh, come up but please let me know and I'll hang on to this for another week or two until I hear back from you okay but I'd like to send it sooner sooner rather than later now if you found value from this video and you'd like to see more like this one please consider hitting the like, bu like button for the thumbs up it helps my channel grow and it lets YouTube know that you're interested in what I have to offer here. If you're not a subscriber yet, please hit the subscribe button. It's located just below the, the main screen here down in the description box and it says subscribe. So you just click that and then you're subscribed to my channel which will put my videos in your feed. And finally, if you decide to ring the notification bell, it will let you know every time that something's happening on this channel. So now let's move on to our inspirational thought for the day. So today I'm reading from these creativity cards. I haven't read from these for a while. And this one says, stretch yourself. Loosen your limbs and reap the benefits of a loosened flow of creativity. Well, no guarantees, but it's certainly a way to keep your neck, legs, and back from cramping up every time you grip that paintbrush until your knuckles turn white. If you don't have time for a yoga class, stretch by yourself slowly and gently. Lie on the floor and tense and then relax different muscle groups. Don't forget to breathe regularly as you do this. And I would say go to YouTube and find yoga videos because there are tons of really good ones out there and you can do your stretches yourself. Okay, my friends, that's all I've got for you today. So until next time, be inspired and do something creative today. And if you'd like to watch another video, check out the next screen for some videos I think you may be interested in. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.